Welcome to Backyard Philosophy, a podcast where a couple friends grab some cold ones, sit around the fire, and talk about science, philosophy, and history. Crack one open, sit back, and get a good laugh as we discuss everything from automation to why the meaning of life is 42. There is a saying that something is so easy, even a monkey can do it. But that is majority of the time just a turn of phrase. But what happens when it actually happens? What happens when a monkey does a job better than most humans? But before I tell you the tale of Jack the Baboon, Nick, how are you and what are you drinking? Doing great, drinking some Rogue Dead Guy Ale, one of my favorites. What are you drinking, Mike? Is it monkey related? Well, it is work-related. It is called a screwdriver, so I guess a grease monkey kind of drink. da dun But before we get into monkey business, Nick, da dun We should restart this whole thing. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how many jokes and puns you can do with the word monkey. But the era is the 1800s in South Africa at a train connecting station in Udiage. That is in between Cape Town and Port Elizabeth. Okay, because that narrows it down. Well, the rest of the world has better geography skills than Americans, so it probably does. Well, Cape Town is the very south coast, and Port Elizabeth is on the west side of South Africa, if I remember correctly. Now, to be fair, I knew where Cape Town was, but anything past that, no idea. Gotcha. To be fair, no one knows where I live either, so... (laughs) <laughs> that is very true you're my friend i have still no idea where you live but in this location in Udiage, has our co-main character james jumper wild an employee of this train station specifically an employee of the port authority railway service by the way of cape town james jumper wide working as a security guard for the train and as one can imagine, Nick, in the middle of nowhere, South Africa, guarding a train, it tends to get a bit boring. So with everyday interactions with trains, Nick, what do you think he did to help spice up his work life? And remember, this is the 1800s. Smartphones haven't been invented yet. So he's looking for a little entertainment? He's looking to pass the time while he guards trains. Now, based on the numerous monkey puns, I'm going to go out on a limb here, Mike. (laughs) I'm growing on you, aren't I? I hate you so much for making me say that. I didn't realize it at first, but he's going to train a monkey to entertain him somehow. Nope. It gets way gruesome really quick. He is not training a monkey. (laughs) He took up an interesting escapade. Well, escapade is one word for it. Of jumping to and between moving trains. That's right. James Jumper Wild got his nickname for jumping between trains for fun. Man, boredom will make people do crazy dumb stuff. And you can only be lucky so many times until your luck runs out. And James Jumper Wide, his luck ran out in 1877 in East Cape by Kellington Port. While attempting one of his evil Knievel stunts, he suffered a horrible accident. Well, not sure if you can call it an accident when you keep jumping trains and in between them. Something bad is about to happen. Oh no, how could this happen to me? (laughs) (laughs) James jumped and didn't quite have enough oomph to make it and fell. With his legs landing right in front of the train wheels, which were moving by the way. In a quick, and I imagine excruciating pain, both his legs were sh- were completely severed by the train. Don't know why that makes me laugh. And being in the late 1800s, you know those legs aren't getting resurgically attached. No. But rather... <laughs> no. <laughs> but, <laughs> but rather than giving up, as I imagine a lot of people would, he soldiered on. People were really, really, really really made different back in the day. 
James would go on and make himself a pair of peg legs himself and would go and ask his superiors for any job they can give him so he would have a job to feed himself and not be homeless. Well, the superiors found him a job, and that job they got him was as a single man. A single man is like an earlier radio operator for trains. Rather than talk through radio, back in the day, they used flags, whistles, uh, signs, just different types of signals to communicate with the train engineer and conductor and people changing the direction of the train through, well, changing stations. And this was just a job mainly of waiting and pulling levers. So that solved the job problem for James. But with no legs, another problem arose. How to get around town? James needed to solve the transportation problem. He still needed a way to get to and from work. So once again, taking his life into his own hands, he built himself a small trolley to help him move around. Unfortunately, a homemade trolley in the middle of South Africa isn't exactly an easy to control device and still required a lot of work to use. A few years would pass and in 1881, about four years after losing his legs, he saw something that would change his life. A baboon. A baboon that was driving an ox wagon in a busy marketplace and the baboon had a reins in his hand and a whip in his hands to control the ox. And an idea lit up in James' mind. I need a baboon! I mean, I think everyone says that at least once in their lifetime. I've definitely said that more than once. I know where I can get you baboons. Nope, I'm good. I live in Texas. We have enough exotic animals here. I have a guy. <laughs> Wait, do they have to be alive? Yeah, preferably. Never mind then. James, seeing this, would go over to the owner of the wagon, the baboon, and ask about the baboon. I mean, it's not every day where the solution to your problems is buying a monkey. I would say that has never come across me of solving a problem of mine of buying a monkey. But the owner of the ox driving wagon didn't even charge James. He simply gave the baboon to James. Whether it was pity or James just constantly nagging him, he eventually just gave James Jack. Jack the baboon. But before giving James the baboon named Jack, he gave James a little bit of advice to make sure Jack would be the best baboon he can be. He gave the advice of give a few sips of brandy around bedtime or else the next day Jack will refuse to work. This is a baboon after my own heart. Give me some brandy or don't work. Uh, I can really get behind this baboon. <laughs> so this is what they mean when they say we're all just primates at heart? <laughs> we're, we're closely related than we really, really know. James took Jack home and would begin teaching Jack things to help James in everyday life. One of the biggest obstacles in James's life was to get to work. Jack the Baboon would push the homemade cart half a mile to the chain to the train post so James could work the levers and be a single man. That's a tall feat in itself, but monkeys, animals in general are pretty smart. And soon James realized that Baboon was much smarter than he previously thought and could do more than just push a cart around. Jack the Baboon started learning how to do James's job and do far more than push him to work. Starting off simple, like fetching keys and handing the deductors every time a whistle from a train blew four times, because, well, monkey see, monkey do. The monkey, the baboon, Jack would see James do this. Every time the train would whistle four times, he James would go grab the keys and get ready and give it to the conductor. Quickly, Jack learned how to do that and was doing it for James. Then, Jack started to learn how to operate the railroad track levers, controlling the direction of the trains by whistles. And done by a baboon, I love it. James acted as an overseer to make sure Jack pulled the right levers and verbally and kind of sign signaled with Jack to make sure it was going to the right area, the right levers were being pulled. So every time a whistle would go off, Rather than going solely off the whistle, Jack would apparently look at James, see how many fingers he was holding up to confirm that he was going to pull the correct number, the correct line in the tracks, which is absolutely amazing to me. And for quite a while, this was their lives. In fact, 
It became so common, most locals didn't even bat an eye when they would see a man with two peg legs and a baboon operating train levers. Well, why would you? (laughs) It worked, and it was normal to everyone. But Nick, there's always that one person, that one turd in the punch bowl that has to go and ruin everything. One day, a quote-unquote high society lady, probably in the train, saw James and Jack and was outraged. How could so many lives be dependent on a baboon doing a person's job? So, she snitched and told the senior railway authorities that they had no idea that a baboon was helping operating the train tracks, so they almost didn't believe her. But, being curious, they went to go out and visit to see if it was actually true. Again, this is the late 1800s. Some tall tales are in tale, so it's when you hear something from in the middle of nowhere Africa at a train station, you kind of take it with a grain of salt, but it's completely true. So, being curious, the railway authorities traveled, and they traveled out there and saw James and Jack operating the train levers. Being outraged, they fired James on the spot. But James, knowing he would be without a job and being disabled in the late 1800s, that would absolutely mean him being homeless and perhaps death through starvation. So James pleaded with them and asked his co-workers, his bosses, help plea his case. And they did. All across the board, they said Jack and James were a good team and doing a great job. And I guess being open-minded and being curious, the railroad authorities said, show us. Show us how you operate the lever. Show us that you can do a good job. And boy, did they show off. They had placed an engineer at a distance to blow a whistle to mimic the trains and did it more rapidly than a normal train to see if Jack the Baboon and James Peg Leg Wide could keep up. Flying colors. They never miss a beat. They aced it all across the board. Perfect. That tag team of a peg-legged man and a baboon was spot on. The railway authorities, after seeing this well-oiled team, went, okay, you can keep your job. And, Nick, this is what I absolutely love. Not only are you going to keep your job, we're making Jack the Baboon an employee. Jack would end up getting a salary of bananas, 20 cents a day, and half a bottle of beer with snacks on Saturdays. Hell yeah. I sometimes love this planet. Soon, the tale of James and Jack would spread throughout the land, and people would travel the railway just to go to the changing station to see this pair in action. And being so good at that job, Nick, you know what happens if you're really good at your job, right? Get promoted? More responsibility. Oh, no. Well, yeah. (laughs) More responsibility. that's the bad part. (laughs) Jack the Baboon would also be turned into a nighttime guard for both the railway station and for james to help james to protect him from intruders to protect him from people trying to take advantage of a person with disability at this time to protect their cottage their home for nine years you heard me that's right nine years james and jack operated the train levers and were best friends and in that nine years as working together They never made a single mistake. They had a perfect record. Talk about even a monkey can do it. Hell, I know humans who can't even change a tire. And you're telling me a baboon was able to operate train scheduling and (laughs) and navigate train whistles to understand which way the train needed to go? I love how it's like there's a lot of people who are like, machines will never take my job. It's like, well, apparently a fucking monkey could. (laughs) It, it, God, that must have been a sight to see. And we'll probably put some pictures up on it, but the pictures of them two together, ah, talk about a picture says a thousand words. But unfortunately, all stories must come to an end. And in 1890, Jack the Baboon would pass from tuberculosis. What is this, a fucking Disney movie, Mike? (laughs) All dogs go to heaven. (laughs) <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't. Of course this had to be a sad story. <sighs> all stories must end, whether it be good or bad, but all stories must be told. I don't even want to imagine the pain James felt after losing his friend. And this is a little bit fucked up, but I think the meaning behind it is sincere. To help remember Jack the Baboon, they now display this his skull 
and Albany Museum in Grahamstown, South Africa. Just goes to show you, animals are smarter than you think. You're never out of fight when something bad happens to you. And with a good friend, you can do the impossible. And also, a monkey will be remembered longer than most of us. That is true. And if you want a, <laughs> apparently a monkey to do good work, you give him brandy at, <laughs> at night and a salary of money, bananas, and booze on Saturdays. <laughs> I feel like that's an, a joke about the American working class, but moving on. <laughs> How about them brandy old fashions? <laughs> oh, I think we could all work a little bit harder if we are uh, well fed and a little tipsy. That's a, that's a great way to make sure you, uh, you're happy at your job. But even though this story has a, an end where two friends would eventually be departed through time and i imagine once james w- james y met his end would be reunited with him it just goes to show you even though you have your legs cut off by train wheels and you're sorry out of luck there's still a way something as so simple as getting a monkey to solve your problems and that monkey would i imagine has to be your best friend right he lives with you. He brings you to work. He helps do your job. I mean, you eat together. You sleep together. Like, talk about a married couple. All right. Now, I'm not saying this is the same monkey, but did this monkey die from eating dates? No, that's it. A... <laughs> All right, Indy, calm down. Just making sure. Nope. This is not a Indiana Jones monkey. This is a baboon. A baboon that liked Brandy, had empathy for a human and was far far smarter than anyone thought it sounds a lot like an indiana jones monkey <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much it that's jack the baboon and james jumper wide a tag team that did i would imagine it would take me a hundred lifetimes to do i do think we kind of glossed over how funny it is that his name is jumper or his nickname yeah he would that's he got the nickname jumper from jumping trains but i also love how his last name is wide jumper Wide. yeah that is pretty funny i mean imagine if you couldn't jump fast enough to get out of a train and we just called you jumper the entire rest of your life (laughs) (laughs) like we're just gonna call you that thing you're really bad at like (laughs) isn't that most nicknames come from though if you, like, throw up from eating peaches, we're going to call you peaches for the rest of your life. Pretty much. Ugh, I guess some things never do change. And now you know about James Jumper Wide and Jack the Baboon. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram.